Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial on Beep Street Drumbo, the modular groove box. In this tutorial I would like to extend uh, from where I left it when I talked to uh, about the MIDI sequencer capabilities. I'm going to use the standalone version for now, but you can use the same concepts uh, of course and as in a UV free. In this tutorial, uh, we are going to go through the stop components, which, uh, believe me, it will take the use of uh, Drumbo to another level when it comes to uh, MIDI sequencing. So, <clears throat> here we are in Drumbo. Let's um, first of all add a, an instrument preset. Let's expand the instrument preset and let's choose, I don't know, that um, black A. Let's uh, click here on um, uh, and the pattern and create four different step with the C2 note and let's click play. Okay, you got it just a simple four notes in a pattern. Right, as you know, you can create multiple patterns, assign them for a uh, each track, you can have instrument for each track, so you can have multiple patterns. And in so doing, you can, of course, create um, a song, for example, a composition of your own. Now, each step here in the pattern can have additional settings, okay? And each step is composed by a number of components. So if you click on this step here, you enter into the stamp components view. If you click plus I, nothing happens. But here's where the magic starts. Let's click on the second step where it says C2. Immediately you see here a first component. This component is called MIDI note. Is a C2. You have a velocity of 100%. You have a gate and you have an offset. So first thing, first let's increase the offset and let's do that also on the fourth step we click on it to bring it up and let's do that as well so let's click play and you will hear that the second and fourth bit will have a slightly delay established here by the offset and you can use that to give some groove for example now let's bring it back to normality Right, okay, it all to the default. So let's click on the plus sign and let's see what we can do. We can add another node component. Okay, we can add a retrig, which will trigger the component. We can add a cycle condition, which will execute only at a specific cycle. We can add a random condition, which might be useful if you want to get, create some creative things. A same condition, scene condition, sorry, which will act based on uh, which scene is selected, a jump condition or a jump to jump to a different step, a once condition, which we can, will happen only once, and a transpose. So let's add a transpose, which is a simple one to, to understand. Let's increase by an octave, or you can go up by semitones, and let's uh, take the fourth step, let's add the same and transpose button and let's go down by a semitone, by an octave. So let's click play. As you can hear, the second step has a, an octave above, the fourth step has an octave below. So when this is played, the first C2 is normal, the second C2 will have an octave up, the third uh, C2 no more, the fourth one an octave below. So that's absolutely uh, great. So uh, as in, uh, as adding racks in the main screen, when you are editing uh, uh, your instrument in Drumbo, you can click on the header, move it down to remove it. So let's add something else to make it more interesting. So let's click on the second, um, um step let's um, remove the transpose now let's add a retrigger and we say retrigger twice let's do that on the fourth step and let's retrigger twice so what will happen this time is that when it goes to the second or fourth step you will hear the note retrigger twice
okay fantastic and as you can see uh, this can be very handy to create some very interesting uh, patterns okay so now let's try to use something different like for example a <clears throat> cycle condition now what we are going to say here is that uh, on the second cycle of for the duration of two plays what we come to the right hand side will happen and we put a note and a second note so we click we bring up the keys we click on c2 and uh, select um, e flat on the keyboard and we change this note here to a g okay so what this means is that the second time that this will be played the pattern will be played then this tap will play these two notes as well. Now, if I click play, you don't hear the chord, and the reason you don't hear the chord is because it's still one voice. So let's exit the step. Let's increase the number of voices to four. Let's go back to the steps and hear that again. As you're going to hear the second time that the pattern is played, on the second step it will play these two additional notes. The same you can do here. So, cycle condition, second for the duration of two, four um, uh, bits. Did I say four bits in the previous one? No, two. Let's make it uh, two then. But you can make it four as well. Up to you. Note and note again, hold that, hold that, and maybe let's add another note as well. In this case, for example, change that to an A sharp 2. So let's play. Fantastic. So as you can see, um, the first time the pattern is played, everything is okay, as you expect it, as normal. When the second time is played here, then this step and this step we played chord. Now, let's go back to the fold, and I'm going to show you also how you can edit and copy steps. So, let's come out from the step editor, let's click on edit, let's click the step, let's click copy, let's go into the step and I click paste. Paste. Okay, we go back to normality now. So we have four normal bits. Okay, perfect. Let me show you now something even more interesting. So let's click and move to the right to add a scene condition. And let's say that on scene number A, this is um played and that's okay no problem as well as um, this one c number a c8 then let's go to the second and we add um a sync condition oops a sync condition and we say b this time Okay, we do the same on the fourth step. Right, so let's exit the step editor. So what will happen is, let's, let's click play. We are on scene A, because the slider is there on the left. As you can hear, only step number one and three are played. Now let's move that to scene number B, or B scene. As you can see, only the second and the fourth steps are actually played. So let's, let's go back to the step editor. And um, this was because the first, as the third note, were set to play only when the same condition is met as A. Um, as you can see, this can be incredibly um, powerful. So here's another example. Let's add the jump 
um, condition. So this says jump by one step or jump by four step, etc. So if you're here, it will jump one step, it will go to this step and so on and so forth. When it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. So as you can see, you can use this very powerfully to actually uh, create some very interesting combination of patterns. If you put these against uh, the number of patterns you have, different tracks, uh, the ability to play different notes, chords, transpose based on the cycle you're playing, or the different scene. So you can start to interact here with the scene in real time while you are recording, for example, in a UV3. Or even better, you can also add some parameter locks associated to the more function as we've seen in a previous tutorial. So you're starting to get a picture how powerful Drumble can be. This is a very exciting feature which you can use in a lot of your compositions and I'm sure you will find it extremely useful. As always, I hope you found this tutorial interesting and useful and see you next time. Bye.